going to start us just with some prayer and start to get comfortable on your mat. So if you prefer seated, that's fine. I personally love to start laying on my back um, with a blanket under my head and just relax into the mat um, or into the blanket or the towel. So go ahead and get comfortable. Just find a, a resting posture you can begin to ease into. Lord, we just thank you that you are here with us in this space. God, we thank you that no matter how much social distancing or quarantine we have to endure in this season, Lord, nothing can keep us from your presence. Lord, as we enter into this holy yoga time together, let our hearts be open to receive what you are ready to give. Thank you, Lord. In your name we pray. So as you're finding that comfortable place on your mat or your, your surface of choice, I invite you just to begin to notice your breath. Notice its natural depth and rhythm. Stress tends to shorten and shallow our breath, which in turn then makes our body feel tense. So maybe just begin to deepen and slow your breath. In yoga, we inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth or the nose, your choice. Through the nose will warm the body and through the mouth will cool it down. So just allow the belly to be soft, to expand on the inhale Filling the full capacity of the lungs. And then let it go. Whether you're seated or laying on your back, maybe you place one hand on your belly and one on your heart. And just allow yourself to notice the breath as it deepens, how it expands and fills the lungs from bottom to top. Maybe you hold for just a moment at the top of your breath and let out a longer, slower exhale. As we practice slowing and deepening the breath, we're actually awakening our healing response side of our nervous system, the parasympathetic nervous system. This is the same part of your nervous system that brings you into calm, slows down the mind, the busyness of the thoughts. In turn can allow some relaxation into the rest of the body. So whether you're laying down or seated, feel free to keep your hands right where they are. Maybe you decide to turn your palms open toward heaven. And continuing that deep breath. Maybe for you, open palms is a symbol of surrender. Maybe it's an invitation, receiving from the Lord what he is ready to give you tonight. 
He just asks that we come as simply as we can, just as we are. So continuing that breath, that posture of choice, and maybe even closing your eyes for a moment as I read a scripture to you. I'm reading from Psalm 62, verse 8. And we're going to start with the Passion Translation. Join me, everyone. Trust only in God every moment. Tell him all your troubles and pour out your heart longings to him. Believe me when I tell you, he will help you. Pause in his presence. So most of the traditional translations in Psalms translate that part, Selah. So I really love this, um, this translation of pause in his presence. It just, it, it really is a holy pause, a stillness. So maybe just taking a couple moments in that stillness, in that quiet. Breathing nice and deep. Just noticing if there's a word or phrase in that passage that stood out to you. Maybe the Lord is drawing your heart in a particular direction tonight through his word. Continuing to breathe deep and slow. And whatever posture you've chosen, just begin to notice the spaces in your body that come in contact with the earth. So if you're seated, maybe it's just your seat here. If you've chosen to lay down and really get into relaxation, Maybe it's the back of the legs, the calves, the thighs, the low back, the seat. Maybe there's a little bit of space there in your low to mid back area where you have a natural curve in your upper back, back of the head and the arms might be resting against the earth. So just noticing each of those spaces as you breathe. Maybe taking a little mental inventory. And just noticing where the mind wanders. Seeing if you're having any type of emotional response to the thoughts in your head. And then in turn, if you are noticing any kind of emotion, just how is that translating into your physical body? What do you feel? Do you have any tension? We don't realize sometimes how, 
how much we carry our emotions in our physical tissues. And so oftentimes they are somewhere along the vagus nerve, which controls the majority of systems in our body. So oftentimes sadness might feel like lumps in the throat or stress might feel like tightness in the chest. And sometimes fear feels like knots in the belly. Or maybe you hold your stress some other place. Maybe you feel it more in tension in the shoulders, the low back, or some other place. Just taking time to notice that. And continuing to breathe. So one thing I always say in my yoga classes is the breath is the only requirement of your practice. If it's the only thing you do, you are inviting healing into your body. So maybe for you, all you do tonight is lay and breathe and listen, and that is perfectly fine, perfectly fine. But I am going to start adding some movement now. So if you would like to participate in the movement part of our practice, just begin by laying on your back. If you're not already there, and maybe you are perfectly comfortable with the legs extended, maybe you prefer to have the knees bent. So there's a few different things we can do when the knees are bent. Maybe we let the knees touch and the feet walk to the outer edges of the mat. Maybe you feel really good in butterfly with the soles of the feet touching and the knees opening. Now if the hip flexors are tight, this might begin to pull a bit and become too much of a stretch. So if that's you at any time, of course, you can always draw the knees back to center. So we're just starting with finding a posture for the lower half of the body that feels good. So once you find that place, just begin to reach your arms up toward the ceiling. Fingers spread wide, facing center. Maybe you pause for a moment and breathe and allow this once again to be a physical posture of worship, acknowledging our King of Kings, our Holy God who holds us in his arms, our protector, our healer. So maybe you stay right here, maybe you begin to rotate the wrists, keeping the fingers spread wide and active. Just a nice slow rotation. And reverse. Maybe see how it feels to make fists, closing them somewhat firmly, just a little bit of a gentle squeeze in the fist, and continue to rotate the wrist. If you do have any carpal tunnel, um, you might notice a stress or a stretch in the back of the hand and throughout the wrist as you rotate. This can be great for people who have desk jobs and do a lot of writing and typing. And reverse the wrists. And then begin to open the right palm toward the ceiling. Fingers spread wide. The left fingers can draw the right fingers back toward the earth, keeping your right elbow nice and straight. 
This might actually allow the stretch to go through the forearm into the elbow. Remember to breathe deep. Notice how with the exhale, the stretch might go just a little bit deeper. And then switching sides when you're ready. Also noticing if one side feels tighter than the other. Maybe you don't really have a lot of tightness in your arms or hands, but so oftentimes we don't notice until we start stretching and that's when we find the tight places. Releasing the hands, maybe the right arm crosses over the body, might be extended here with the fingers active, or maybe you bend the elbow and let the hand rest. The left hand can come toward the right shoulder and just with your exhale, allow it to guide the shoulder toward your heart. Like you're giving yourself a hug. switching sides in your own time. Maybe you found a stretch that you really need and you feel like you need to hang out there a little longer. Of course, that's okay. This is your practice, so you get to do it your way. arms go out here in a T or a cross as we say in holy yoga with palms to the earth. If you're in a tight space and you don't really have room to extend the arms, maybe see if you can just bend the elbows and cactus the arms so the hands will come up. Great palms facing upward. And from here, bending the knees if, they, if you haven't already and placing the feet in front of the hips on your mat or mat-like surface. Walking the feet toward the outer edges of the mat. And just letting the knees start to fall very slowly and gently toward the right side. Mindful to keep that left shoulder down on the earth. Maybe if it's available to you, you gaze over your left arm here for a little bit of a neck stretch. Just remember that deep breath. to center in your own time. Exhale, letting the knees fall very slowly the opposite way. Maybe you gaze over the right arm if that's available to you. Keeping that right shoulder on the earth. Just drawing it as close to the earth as you can.
coming back to center, allowing the feet to come directly in front of the hips. The arms come down by your sides when you're ready, palms to the earth. Maybe you lift your fingers a little bit to feel the four corners of the palms pressing gently into the earth. And we'll roll our shoulder blades just so they're flat on the earth behind us. Lifting the chin ever so slightly, gazing up toward the ceiling. And we want to make sure the knees are directly above the hips here. Careful not to let them splay open, just honoring the body. All these little cues are going to help protect your joints as we move into different postures. So with your next inhale, pressing through the heels, maybe you begin to lift the hips up, coming into bridge pose. If you'd like, you can lift the heels, coming up to your toes. And your exhale, allowing the heels and spine to roll back to the mat, nice and slow. And just follow your breath here. One last time. Allowing the spine to rest on the earth. Maybe you draw the knees in and rest the hands on the shins. Just give yourself a little hug. So when you're doing that, your knees might be close together. They might be spread wide. All of us have a little bit different anatomy. So see what feels better in your body. Maybe you prefer the knees to be spread a little wider. Give your belly space to expand with the breath. Keeping the feet flexed and active. So maybe you keep the legs right where they are, or maybe you begin to transition into happy baby. So in happy baby, our knees are spread wide, and there's a few different placements for the hands. So maybe you have nice open loose hips like a baby, so you place the hands inside the arches of the feet. And bring the heels to point toward the ceiling, the knees are bent. But if you have any kind of stress or tension or stiffness built up in the hips or low back, maybe instead you just place your hands around the outside of the thighs. We want to feel the tailbone and shoulders resting comfortably against the earth. The feet are flexed. And just notice how that feels in your body. Does that feel good in your inner thighs and your hips? Anytime you feel pain, of course, you can back out or just pass up, skip that posture altogether. Make sure that your body is responding positively to the posture. Maybe from here you begin to extend the legs and let the hands rest inside the thighs. You might do a little bit of a V here. Maybe it's wide, maybe it's narrow. See what feels better in your body. No pain in the inner hip area or in the low back. Maybe you add a little ankle rotation here.
bending the knees, allowing the feet to come in front of the hips on the mat. Extending the left leg just to rest out straight, keeping the foot flexed and active that engages muscles. And once again, anytime we're engaging muscle groups, we're protecting the surrounding, the joints that they surround. So that is a vital part of a yoga practice. So if you were able to find a strap or a scarf or a belt or some kind of rope type <laughs> um, apparatus, you can find that. I'll show you with and without. So if you don't have um, any of those things available to you, I'll show you how you can do this without. But if you do, you can start just by drawing the right foot in. We're going to place that strap-like prop around the ball of your right foot. So both feet are flexed here. If you don't have a strap, an option is to either clasp the hands around the shin or even behind the thigh here. So lots of options here. See what's working best for you. And with your exhale, we just want to guide the knee ever so gently toward our upper body. So we're just feeling that stretch get a little bit deeper. So if you already feel like you're in a pretty intense place, maybe back out of it a bit. And just allow the breath to guide you naturally a little bit deeper into that posture. Notice how the breath and the body just work. There's this beautiful synergy between the two of them. So we don't need to force ourselves deep into a posture. We ease in let, letting the breath guide us. So if you have your, your yoga strap-like item here, you can just on your next exhale begin to slowly press through the heel extending the leg just to where you begin to feel a subtle stretch in the back of the leg. Once again, just letting the breath guide us deeper into the stretch, slowly, gradually, organically. If you don't have that strap, the hands might be clasped behind the thigh. also like to mention I personally have a hypermobility condition that makes my knees bend backwards but I do find that if I keep my foot flexed engage all the front muscles of the leg it's going to prevent my leg from hyperextending and then I can actually get a proper stretch in the back of the leg without injuring the overstretched tendons in my body. So maybe you stay right here if you just have your hands clasped, but if you are using a belt or a yoga strap, one option from here is to just begin to make some circles. So if you have a nice long item, you might be able to rest your upper arms on the earth, which is a really nice way to relax and then just making some slow circles. Maybe they're big, maybe they're small, or somewhere in between. I personally prefer nice big circles because I can get a really good hip rotation. Feels like a massage in my hip joint. So see what you like. Notice the pace at which your leg wants to move. As it often reflects the pace of your thoughts. So if you're in any kind of state of stress before you started your yoga practice, you might need to remind yourself to go back into that slow, deep breath. It may not be a habit yet, and so especially if you're new to yoga, just being gracious with yourself as you forget. Just that gentle, loving reminder to return to the deep breath, bringing healing into the body. 
You can reverse that leg rotation if you're choosing it. your way back to center in your own time. Maybe coming into a little hip opener here. So if you do have a yoga strap type um, prop, you can take both ends around the right hand and just maybe wrap it very gently so you can hold on without much tension in the hand. The left arm can either release out in a cross or cactus based on how much space you have. And we just slowly open the leg toward the left, or toward the right. Stop when you begin to feel that subtle stretch inside the thigh. We're pressing the left shoulder down into the mat to help with balancing out um, the weight in the body. And if it's available to you, maybe you turn your head and gaze over your left arm Get a little neck stretch here and remember to breathe nice and deep. to center. Switching hands on the belt if you have one. Relaxing the left leg. The right arm goes out in a cross or T, maybe cactus. And as we relax the left leg, just guiding the right leg across the body, keeping that right shoulder firmly planted into the earth. So if you don't have the strap, you can just bring the hand outside the thigh and maybe see if you prefer to have the leg extended or maybe it's bent. A little bit different sensation. So you can see what works best for you. Once again, noticing how the exhale aids in tension leaving the body. slowly drawing the leg back to center. You can release the belt and let the right leg slowly lower to meet the left. The left knee draws in now and we'll do the same thing on the other side. So if you have your prop you can use that around the ball of the foot. Otherwise, hands clasp either on top of the shin or behind the thigh. With your exhale, just feeling that knee draw a little bit closer to your upper body. On your next exhale, either hands on the prop or hands clasped behind the thigh now, pressing through the heel, very slowly begin to extend the leg. And as we keep the foot flexed, we might see that we need to keep a little bend in the knee if the back of the leg feels tight. Feel free to keep as much bend in the knee as you need, honoring your body, noticing how you're feeling in your skin. No one knows your body better than you. So just really notice and 
give yourself grace and love by choosing the postures that feel good and healing and backing out of the ones or skipping them altogether if they cause any type of pain. So we're taking those deep breaths here. Maybe making some slow circles here if you choose that option. I definitely prefer to have a prop for this movement. Giving a little bit of tension on the foot. The hands can help guide the leg. So it's not as many of the thigh muscles having to work. Reversing the rotation in your own time if you're choosing any rotation. Making your way back to center whenever you're done. Preparing for that hip opener if you're participating in that. So maybe you have a prop you can wrap around the left hand. Maybe you just bring the left hand inside the left thigh. The right arm can release out and across or T or cactus. Just begin to slowly open the leg toward the left, keeping both feet flexed and active. Again, only going as far into that stretch as feels good to you. So really paying attention to the hip area and how that feels. Time you can inhale back to center nice and slow. Maybe preparing to come into a twist here if you are preferring to participate. So we're releasing the left arm out into cross or cactus, relaxing the right leg, pressing that left shoulder firmly into the earth, and then slowly begin guide the left leg across the body. It's okay if the left hip comes up. We just want to keep the left shoulder down because we're actually getting a stretch from the hip all the way up the body into the shoulder space. So if it's available to you, maybe you gaze over your left arm here. You might feel a little bit more stretch in the neck. long as you need if you're loving that stretch when you're ready inhale coming back to center nice and slow you can release the belt and let the left leg slowly lower back to the mat you can set your prop off to the side and drawing both knees in giving yourself a hug once again hands on the shins maybe you rock side to side here or even in a circular motion, massaging all four corners of the low back on the earth. If you're doing circles, maybe just reverse your circles. rolling onto either side, whatever side feels good to you. 
So maybe you have a pillow or some kind of cushion under your head. Maybe you use your hands in prayer under your head for support or even extending that lower arm long to rest your head on. So just see how you feel comfortable. And do you prefer to have your knees drawn in nice and close to the torso or maybe they're further away? And just hang out here in this posture for a few breaths. I'm going to sit up, but I'd like you to, I just invite you to stay in that posture. Notice the spaces in the body resting against the earth. Notice your breath. Notice how your body feels in this posture. Is it a comforting posture? Is it a relaxing posture? I'm just hanging out there for a moment as I read our passage once again. Psalm 62, 8. Join me, everyone. Trust only in God every moment. Tell him all your troubles and pour out your heart longings to him. Believe me when I tell you, he will help you. Pause in his presence. Breathe deep, noticing once again if there was a word or phrase that stood out to you. What is God speaking to your heart tonight? What is that truth that he knew you needed to hear? So feel free to hang out there a little longer if you'd like, or maybe just begin to ease yourself up to a seated posture. We won't be here too long. We're going to come into child's pose, or I'll at least show you that option. So if you do have any tenderness in the knees, you might prefer to have a little extra padding under them, depending on how hard your surface is. So if you did get an extra towel or blanket, you might want to just have it folded maybe two or three times, depending on its size, and smooth it out as you lay it across the mat. And begin to slowly make your way to a tabletop. Getting there, however, works best for your body. Allowing the tops of the feet to rest flat on the mat or as close to flat as your body allows. The big toes can touch. And you might choose to keep the knees close together or spread them far apart. It's your choice, either one and begin to sit back toward your heels. We wanna keep the tailbone low. So as you begin to come down, if you do have an extra blanket or towel that you're able to fold or roll, um, so you have a few inches of thickness, mindful noticing the tailbone as you come down. So you might start by just resting on the forearms and then maybe you need to rest that prop under your forehead just to allow the tailbone to stay low. If 
it's available to you, maybe you bring your forehead all the way down to the mat, allowing the top of the forehead to rest. Maybe the arms stretch out forward. You might also choose to bring the arms down by your sides. So that space in the top of the forehead, if you're able to get into a version of this posture where there's a little bit of pressure on that space, that is um, a pressure point that can help relieve anxiety, depression, um, alleviate insomnia even. So it's a great spot to get some pressure and it helps to have um, our bodies in that posture. If, if your body allows you to have your heart a little bit above your head, And maybe you notice too, this, this child's pose is somewhat of a posture of surrender. So as you hang out here for a few more breaths, you're just noticing the state of your heart. If there's something in particular that you can lay down at the feet of Christ. The voice translation of our passage says, have faith in him in all circumstances. Open up your heart to him. The true God shelters us in his arms. So maybe even just visualizing yourself in the shelter the arms of your Heavenly Father. He is our help. So from that child's pose, if your hands are not forward already, maybe walking them forward and we're going to root down through that left hip, so keep it nice and low. Maybe walking the hands to the side for a little side stretch. So if you did need a prop under the top of the head, just move the prop with you. Rolling your shoulders back and down so they're not up in the ears. Maybe the right arm even lays across your back here. If you're taking that side stretch, walking the hands to the left, rooting down through the right hip, keep it nice and low. Keep the shoulders back and down, resting the top of the forehead on your prop if you need it or on the earth. Maybe bringing that left arm across the back. center, slowly 
slowly making your way up to a tabletop here. So when we come into tabletop, we just want to make sure that our knees are directly under the hip bones, making a parallel line from the hips to the earth. The hands will come under the shoulders, fingers spread wide, pressing the four corners of the palms firmly into the earth, earth to protect your wrists, particularly the space between the index finger and thumb. As that space comes down, the wrist will come up and the pressure comes off the wrist. So really noticing that. And we'll soften the tailbone down just to feel a little bit of engagement in the lower abdomen and then rolling the shoulders back and down. And we want to make sure the upper abdomen is also engaged so the upper back doesn't arch. So we say knitting the ribs together. And when you do that, you feel a little bit of engagement there. It lifts the mid back. So the back is a little bit more flat. And then drawing the ears in line with the shoulders, that just takes the stress out of the cervical spine. So first, just noticing how that feels in your body as you breathe. And then maybe shifting here into a cat cow. So with your inhale, we're gonna lift the heart forward, chin up. Exhale, arch the back like a cat, let the head hang. Following your breath here, inhale, chin up, heart forward, exhale, arch the back, head hangs. Maybe you shake your head no and yes here and just let gravity help you get a little neck stretch. Coming back to center. Begin to make your way slowly to seated posture. So we call it simple seated, or maybe you'd prefer to sit back on your heels. And I'll show you some modifications. If you have any tenderness in your low back or tightness in your hip flexors, you might prefer to take your blanket or towel or extra prop, um, fold it a couple times, and then place it under the tailbone. And this will allow for some space in the hip flexors, the knees can get a little bit lower, and it can allow for longer tolerance in a seated posture. Another option, if, if ankles crossed really doesn't work in your body, you can sit back on your heels. So you can either sit directly on your heels or you can take a prop to place behind the knees so that your knees are not in such a deep bend. Or you can even just place your blanket or towel under the knees for extra padding. So lots of different options. Just figure out how you feel most comfortable when you're seated. From there, we're gonna do the same alignment that we did in our tabletop. So softening the tailbone down, rolling the shoulders back and down. So as the heart lifts, sometimes we overarch the back. So we're gonna knit the ribs together. That's that upper abdomen engaging that brings a little more flatness to the upper back. and then drawing the ears in line with the shoulders. Taking a couple deep breaths, noticing how it feels. Maybe your eyes are closed. So just be stable and held up by your core muscles. Just noticing that strength in your body. And 
we'll shift into a little bit of a twist here if you'd like. So if that's available to you, bringing the left hand to the right thigh, the right hand can plant either just to your right on the earth, a little bit behind you, or on a prop if you have a prop and need that, or it can come directly behind the low back on the prop or the earth. And as you place the hand, really rooting down through that left hip, feel it get nice and low. We want that glute really anchoring into the earth. And then a gentle twist to the right. We're going to start at the waist, then the heart, then the neck. Keep the shoulders rolled back and down. Maybe you turn the neck, maybe not. See what works best for your body. right side, keeping it firmly planted, placing the left hand probably similarly to the way you did the right before, and then a gentle twist at the waist, the heart, then the neck. Maybe rolling the shoulders a few times here. stretches here. So sitting up nice and tall, all those same areas engaged. We have the tailbone softened down, rolling the shoulders back and down, knitting the ribs in so we feel the lower and the upper abdomen working here. And ears in line with the shoulders. And then bringing the right hand over to the left side of the head. Inhale here. Exhale, guiding the right ear toward the right shoulder. Again, noticing how it's just easing yourself into the stretch. We start with a subtle movement and the breath just deepens the stretch. Maybe the left hand comes down to the mat and starts walking away. And turning your gaze under your right arm, the hand can come to the back of the head. Staying there as long as you'd like and inhale to center, releasing the right hand down by your side. So all of that is just in your time. Making sure you're still nice and tall in your spine and then bringing the left hand to the right side of the head. Inhale here. Exhale, left ear toward the left shoulder. Maybe those right fingers are walking away if you need a little deeper stretch. You can turn your gaze under your left arm and bring the hand to the back of the head. Maybe if 
few more deep breaths if you'd like. Otherwise, inhale to center and either hand stays at the back of the head, either one. Inhale here, staying long in the spine. Exhale, chin to chest, keeping the spine long. start to ease our way back into our final resting posture of choice. So if you liked being on your back, you can go there. Maybe you found another posture during our practice that you really loved. So feel free to just ease back into that. If you do happen to have um, a blanket like so, I'll give you an option for a heart opener. So you start with uh, basically a, a rectangle and then on the long side we're going to roll it up. And place that roll behind you. Now depending on how long your spine is versus your roll, um, you'll want your uh, cervical spine to be supported as well. So you might need to sit a little further away or maybe you have a pillow that you can place at the top to, to um, support your head. You're just careful to notice that placing the feet in front of the hips and then slowly allow yourself to roll down. So it might feel like a little bit of a back bend, noticing how that feels in your body, finding your stability and then letting the arms release either out in cross or cactus. Notice how that roll comes between the shoulder blades and allows the front heart space to open. So maybe you really need a heart opener. Maybe this is um, a really lovely posture for you, but just notice how it feels in your body. Some people are not ready for this kind of opening in their heart space. Some people don't like the feeling of the back bend. It might feel like it's pinching the low back. So if this isn't working for you, you can just remove that roll and come onto your back. Maybe you even place the roll under the knees a little bit of elevation under the knees can feel good if you have tightness in the low back. So allowing the arms to either float down by your sides or maybe they half moon around your head or open out and across or maybe they just rest on your belly. But connecting with the breath once again, noticing its depth and pace. Noticing the spaces in your body that touch the earth, touch your props. Taking that little mental inventory. Maybe as you exhale, you notice the body sinking a little bit deeper into the earth. Feeling tension just melting away. Gravity pulls you in. Continue to rest in this space. 
Maybe you allow yourself to close your eyes. Taking another series of deep, slow yoga breaths. Psalm 62, 8 from The Voice. Have faith in him in all circumstances, dear people. Open up your heart to him. The true God shelters us in his arms. say a prayer over us. Lord, we thank you for your living and active word. Lord, we thank you that you are not powerless in any circumstance. God, even in these difficult times that seem so scary, God, you knew they were coming. And you are the one who calms the storm with your voice, who speaks and creation comes into existence, who breathes and man becomes alive. So God, we just confess to you that it is hard to ignore what we see and experience in this physical world. It's hard to see that and remember that you are still God. But Lord, we acknowledge that you are. are this loving God that holds us in your arms, that promises to be our help, that longs to hear the cries of our hearts. Lord, we pray that this season of forced rest and solitude will be so fruitful, God, that it will be a blessing, that we will enter into your presence and see what you have for us in this time, that you will grow our faith and our hope. Thank you, Lord. In your precious name we pray. So maybe you are all tucked in for bed, all ready to rest, and feel free to rest as long as you'd like, even after this video has ended. But I thank you so much for joining me tonight, for practicing and worshiping with me. And I encourage you to go back and listen to that playlist as many times as you'd like. It's available for um, for public use, as well as this video will be. So uh, use it as you like, and um, I will be following my schedule in the event on my business page. So every other Sunday and Tuesday evening, we'll have live yoga together. And thank you so much.